Hey there, it's John from Excel Campus, and in this video, I'm going to explain how to add grand totals to a pivot chart. So here we have an example, and I have my grand total displayed right here in the pivot chart. And this is dynamic, so if I were to filter the pivot chart, let's say for Q3, it's only going to show the items for Q3 or the months for Q3, and also dynamically update the grand total here to just display that number, uh, the total for Q3, which we also see over here in the pivot table. So what I'm not doing with this is adding a separate column in the pivot chart or separate data point here for the grand total. And I'll explain why at the end of this video. So hang around for that. But let's go ahead and dive into how to set this up. And this uses a text box here in the pivot chart. And we link that to the uh, grand total in the pivot table. So let's look at how that happens. So I'm going to go over to the demo sheet here. And here I have my pivot table. I also have the pivot chart set up already, uh, along with a few slicers over here. So the first thing we're going to do is make sure we have the grand totals turned on in the pivot table. So select any cell in the pivot table, go to the design tab, uh, grand totals, make sure it's on for rows uh, or rows or columns, depending on how your pivot table is set up. And then the next thing we want to do is also make sure get pivot data is turned on. So go to the analyzer options tab under the pivot table options drop down here you'll see this uh, generate get pivot data option make sure that check mark is checked and that this is turned on you can just click it to turn it on if it's off it's just a toggle so once we have both of those uh, we're going to go to a blank cell and create a formula we'll just go to this cell over here just make sure the cells out out of the way of the pivot table if the rows or columns expand uh, for the pivot table. So under this cell here for right now, I'm going to type the equal sign. And then I'm just going to select the cell that contains the grand total. And that's going to create this get pivot data function uh, with the item total here. This is the field in the values area and then a reference to the, the starting uh, cell, the pivot table. So if we hit enter now, that's just going to put that number, that grand total number in this cell. And then we're going to create a text box and, and link to this cell here. Now, before we do that, we also want to format this number because otherwise it's just going to have this general number formatting. And even if we were to change the number formatting for the cell, that's not going to pull through to the text box. So we're going to use the text function for this. So we'll just hit F2 or edit the cell, edit the formula. I'm going to start typing the word text, tab into that. The text function has two arguments. The first is the value, which will be returned from the get pivot data function. And then next, we're going to uh, specify the text formatting or the number formatting. So we'll just type a comma here. And then within quotation marks, we're going to specify this number formatting. Now, in this case, we have the dollar symbol. We'll use the uh, number symbol or hashtag there. And then three number symbols, uh, just like that. So this will give us that common number formatting or that currency style uh, number formatting. Then we wrap that in quotation marks, close the parentheses there, and then we hit enter and that will give us our formatted number. Now, if you're not sure how to uh, find this or create this and you have a different number format, uh, you can just right click any cell here in the values area, go to number format. That'll open the format cells window. Uh, in this case, I'm using currency, but if I now click the custom tab, that will actually show me the number format here. So you can use a variation of this, or I used a kind of a variation of that custom number format. If you have decimal places or something like that, you'll be able to find that custom number format there and use that in the text function. So I'll close that. So now that we have our uh, grand total here, next we're going to add the text box. And I'm just going to first select the pivot chart. So make sure you select the uh, bounding border of the pivot chart. Then we'll go to the insert tab. Under illustrations, we're going to choose shapes and a text box. And then we're just going to draw this text box here within the pivot chart. And we're not going to put anything in this. Instead, I'm going to go up to the formula bar and click into it. I'm going to type equals and then select the cell with the get pivot data function in it with this formula. So select cell D3 right here. You can see that reference is created here in the formula bar. We'll hit enter and that will input that or display that number there, that formatted number 
in the text box. So this text box is linked to this cell and this cell is linked to the pivot chart. The reason we don't link it directly is this cell will move as we filter the pivot chart. So that's why we have this uh, get pivot data kind of doing this workaround, this indirect uh, workaround. Now, as you also saw in my original example, I had the word grand total in here and we could add that to our formula as well. So I'm just gonna edit this formula within quotation marks. I'm gonna type the word grand total uh, and use a colon and then a space and then quotation marks again. Then I'm gonna use the ampersand symbol to join all that text together. So I'll hit enter there and now we have our grand total and then our number. And again, this is all linked up. So if we were to filter the pivot chart and pivot table, we can now see that we get the correct grand total here for the items that are displayed in the pivot chart. Same thing over here. Another little quick tip here is if you wanted to add a line break here, you can also do that in the formula as well with the uh, character code 10. So I'm gonna use the uh, char function, the char function or character function, tab into that. Uh, and just specify the number 10 there. That's the uh, character code for a line break. Ampersand again to join all that. And when I hit enter in the cell here, if you uh, were to wrap the text, you'd see that line break. And within our shape, we just need to make it a little taller and then we'll see that line break as well. So you can, the point here is that you can format this however you'd like, add line breaks, additional text in order to uh, format that grand total. A lot of options there for how you can do this. And of course you can apply uh, fill color, font color here as well to this shape. And one thing I forgot to mention, uh, the reason I selected the pivot chart first before inserting the text box is that when you do that, the text box now becomes part of the pivot chart. It's embedded in the pivot chart. And when you move the pivot chart, the text box moves with it. So this just makes it easier for creating a dashboard and lining things up to just have that text box embedded in the pivot chart. So I have a few other examples of this as well. If we go over to the uh, chart examples sheet, a uh, few other examples. Here's the first one, just showing the grand total. Uh, down here we have another one with the grand total on the side. You can see I have that line break there in that particular example. And here I have a line chart uh, with the grand total on the right side as well. So there's a few just different formatting options for you to look at. And of course you can uh, come up with and create your own. Now at the beginning of the video, I said that uh, I did not have the chart data in a separate series for the grand total. That's what, this is what it would look like if we did do that. This is not a pivot chart. This is just a regular chart. I just copied and pasted the values from our pivot chart here. And I'm, I'm using that as the source and including the grand total. Now the reason I don't do this and I recommend not doing this is because obviously here it skews the data in the chart. It's really hard to now see the monthly trend here uh, because this number is such a bigger number for the grand total that it just the scale of it's off and it makes the chart much harder to read if what we're focused on is the monthly trend. So that's why I prefer to just have the grand total as text within the chart so we can still see that number if that number is important, but we don't actually need it as a data point here. It really doesn't make much sense or add any value, at least not to this particular chart. It just makes it harder for the user to read and understand what's going on. Now, if you do have a scenario or a chart type where you think the grand total in it would be beneficial, uh, leave a comment below. I'd love to know what that is. I just don't have a scenario for that. So if you do have a scenario for that, I'd love to know what that is and possibly we can create a solution to include that with a pivot chart as well. I'd say in general, in most cases, you'll wanna do something like this where you just have uh, the grand total outside in, in a text format so you can still display it, still a relevant number, and tells you what the grand total of all the items in the pivot chart is. So I hope that helps. Of course, if you have any questions or suggestions, uh, please feel free to leave a comment below. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.